33 year old Orlando mom Michelle Parker has been missing for more than a week. She was last seen dropping off her three year old twins at her ex Dale Smith's house. It all happened the same day she appeared on the People's Court fighting Smith over a $5,000 engagement ring. What theory do you have that he doesn't see a penny for any of this? Is what, that you gave it to him? I threw it at him. I gave it to he him. He should have caught. He should be a better catch. Yeah, he should be. And he shouldn't have put his hands on me. And he shouldn't have put his hands on me prior. He shouldn't have left me three or four times over the past year and a half that we've been together. Took my own truck and left me in SeaWorld. That was another one. Um, for reasons I don't deserve. It just, it's been a, a hell of a roller coaster ride. And it's poison. And we're done. Parker's family does not consider Smith a suspect, and today they've released Michelle's last voicemail in hopes it could bring new leads to the case. Hey, Dad. Um, it's about 8.40. This is Michelle on Wednesday morning. I know that you're at work, but call me when um, you have lunch or you have break or at the end of your day, okay? I love you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Joining us to discuss the case are two of Florida's finest, sex crimes prosecutor Stacey Onowitz and criminal defense attorney Lawrence Walters. Welcome to you both. Happy to be here. All right, Larry, a lot of people would think that the ex is the obvious suspect here, but the family doesn't think so. The police say they don't think so either. What do you make of this? Well, the, the police know a lot more than anybody else does about this, and if they don't think that he's a suspect, then they have good reason to exclude him. Now, I, I don't think that anybody's actually excluded. I'm sure that they're looking at everybody and looking carefully at, at all possibilities. And, you know, and, uh, you have to consider that this person may not have been abducted by anybody. They, you know, she may have disappeared on her own volition. Uh, you know, suicide, unfortunately, may be a, an issue. So, you know, th there's not always going to be a suspect who is the focus focus of an investigation, the police have to consider all possibilities. And Stacey, her family says uh, her boyfriend texted with her, the, the gentleman she's now dating, texted with her after she dropped off the children. That had taken place. She had moved on. Uh, he said that there's no way, and her family says there's no way she would have ever left her children behind. She also has an 11-year-old as well. What do you think happened? Well, I can't tell you exactly what happened. I mean, certainly it is a mystery. I think the first thing is the viewers probably think that her ex boyfriend, the guy that she went to court with, should be a suspect, but it's very interesting. In this case, he won in the courtroom, and both of them had to consent to go on TV for this issue, and so they both knew that some kind of dirty laundry was going to come out, so I think that's why the family doesn't think he's involved. I think it is a mystery. They are saying that her car was found kind of on the wrong side of town, and so that's why the police now are investigating everything. The random possibility that it was a random person that did this to her, and really, the police are keeping a lot of the a lot of the information close to the vest because that's what you do in an investigation. You don't want all pieces of the puzzle to be out there. Now, Larry, we know that the reward money continues to increase. They found her car. Searchers have been out there. What else can folks be doing to help it at this point? Well, there has been a, a pretty significant search presence. People have spent their Thanksgiving day walking around searching. There, there are volunteers who are looking around. Uh, but I think it's also important for people to know, anybody who might have information, uh, that if they're concerned about their information getting them involved in a possible crime, that they have the opportunity to go to a local defense lawyer and tell them and talk about their possible involvement and how their information might help the police without going directly to the police. All right, let's move on to another mystery since we have two experts with us. Let's talk about missing beauty Robin Gardner. She was last seen in August with American Gary Giordano in Aruba. A judge has just ruled that the 50-year-old businessman must be released next week. He'll be free to leave the country. Prosecutors have appealed that decision because they say he's still considered the lone suspect, but it seems like he could actually walk free. Stacy, if there's no evidence against them, I guess this judge says no fair to keep uh, holding him. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, they've add, the prosecutors have gone in and asked for extensions, and they have gotten a lot of extensions because they're waiting for them to put forth evidence. You know, the, the standard of proof in holding him is really a serious suspicion, which differs from a probable cause standard that we have. And unless and until they can really pony up some evidence attaching him to this crime or the missing person, then there's really no grounds to hold him. Now, prosecutors are appealing, and they're hoping that the decision will be made in their favor prior to Tuesday. Because once Tuesday comes, he's on a plane coming back here, so he is a flight risk. And that's why they're hoping to get this done and over with. But like I said, unless and until there is something for them to hang their hat on, he probably is going to walk out the door.
And Larry, his attorneys say there has been no evidence that links him to this crime. There are circumstantial things that have been discussed. The fact that he bought a $1.5 million accidental death policy on her before this trip. How damning is that or is it just too tangential at this point? It's not nearly enough. In the United States, uh, this gentleman would never have even been arrested because of the probable cause standard that, that Stacy mentioned. Here, there is no evidence linking him to the disappearance. And, you know, they held him for as long as they could. They tried to come up with some evidence, and they simply couldn't. Um, you know, calling him a flight risk is, is a bit of a stretch. You know, he's going to go home, and that's where he's allowed to go. He could always be extradited if they come up with some evidence. But at this point, you know, he really does need to be released. And Stacey, what do you make of that idea of extradition? Because prosecutors have talked about the fact that down the line, if they did discover other evidence in Aruba, they would file new charges and try to get him extradited. Would that ever happen? Do you see that scenario playing out if he goes free on Tuesday? Well, I mean, certainly there have been issues where people have been released from other countries, come back here, and extradition has taken place. It just happened with the gentleman in L.A. who was the producer whose wife was murdered, and they say he's the murderer down in Peru or someplace else, but they extradited him back. So, I mean, it's difficult, but the likelihood is there that it could definitely could happen. So, listen, if evidence does come about where prosecutors feel that he can't be charged, they will do everything in their power once he's back in the States to get him back in Aruba. All right, excellent point, Stacy. Stacy and Lawrence, thank you very much for your uh, expertise tonight.